Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of Scrabble Guess the Elo. Once again, what we're going to be doing in these videos is going through and analyzing a game of Scrabble, maybe two games, depending on how quickly the first one goes, and based on only the plays, trying to figure out what the ratings are of both Player 1 and Player 2. So without further ado, let's jump right into this game. Uh, player 1 is first, and uh, it looks like Player 1 will be the annotator in this game, as we have their full rack. I fully expect we'll see Cot come down here, dumping the Q. And indeed we do. Uh, so Player 2, we're only going to have partial racks, so it'll be uh, a little bit more challenging trying to figure out Player 2's rating than, uh, than Player 1's, but we'll go ahead and still do the best we can. Player 2 responds with Homo, paralleling Cot, and Player 1 has drawn the Z, the first thing I would look at here is maybe a play down next to Homo to this triple. I see Puled, which is okay. It keeps CZ, which is not a good lead for bingoing, but pretty good for scoring. So I don't hate that. Could also play Close through this O for 32. Keeps DPU, which is not ideal either. Ouzel, I don't really like. It's too constant heavy a leave. Yeah, maybe Puled or Dolce, D-U-L-C-E, is also reasonable. I can kind of live with either. Uh, even Coupled, just keeping a Z, is reasonable. Let's see what Player 1 did. Okay, they played Close. I don't hate it. I don't think the Z has much value on, on this board, so I, I don't really love uh, opening all those folders and, and keeping it. So I'm perfectly fine with Close. Player 2 plays Res, so seems reasonable, scores well, and they probably had... Duplicate R's and, and E's. Player 1 with uh, a bit of a constant heavy rack. Could maybe see... I don't love closes and spud just because of the S-hook it gives back. Maybe fugs or fuds in closes. I don't see anything else. You could also save the S and just play fug under close. What's the score difference? 24, 29. It's 10 less. I would probably... Yeah, it's kind of close here, because playing FUD or FUG does make the S very valuable. On the other hand, you do have a lot of consonants, so and the S is, at the end of the day, another consonant. So I don't hate getting rid of it for a few extra points. Uh, yeah, player 1 elects to play FUGS. I think, I think that's perfectly reasonable here. I wouldn't fault them for either choice. Uh, player 2 is going to play FLOCK from this F. Let's see, player 1, they have a blank, but some clunky stuff otherwise... Probably poof through this O. I don't see anything else. Yeah, that looks fine. This is uh, definitely turning into a very closed board quickly, which isn't bad for player one. They have have the lead and they have the blank. Uh, player two plays absent. I can't fault them for blowing up the rack here. There doesn't seem to be anywhere to bingo. I guess you could hook spoof now, but they, they probably didn't have anything there. And they've got to score and open something up since uh, there's not much else to accomplish here. So that looks reasonable. Player one, let's see. Don't see anything great. Dove is is okay. DYN blank is decent. There might not be anything better here. I don't see anything from this L. Yeah, it looks fine to me. And that's what they do. Uh, player two plays Vo. So pretty slow game so far. I don't think... Hard to say for player two. I don't think player one has made any, certainly no egregious mistakes. And uh, I mean, there are a few sort of questionable decisions, but so far player one's doing pretty well. Lindy seems pretty obvious here. Um, they go with Linny. I'm not sure I see. I guess LN blank versus DN blank. DN blank is a little bit better. I'm not sure I'd sacrifice the three points there. There's not really any hooks for the D. Uh, and you're you're still floating the D by playing Lindy for yourself. I, I don't think I s quite see the merit to sacking the three points, but um, I don't really mind it either. Uh, player two plays Exxon. It is interesting, though, going back to this play, I feel like the fact that player one did sacrifice three points suggests to me that they're very strong, because I feel like most players in, like, the... 16, 17, 1800 range, they would know Lindy and see it and pretty quickly just play Lindy without sacrificing. So I, I think the fact that player one actually thought about sacrificing and elected to sacrifice the points, even if it might not necessarily be correct, 
shows that they're a little bit stronger. Um, we'll see if that theory is borne out, but um, I'm sort of starting to think they're 1900 plus. Uh, but we'll see. That's what's the fun of this game. You never really know until the end. Okay, so player one almost certainly will have a bingo here, I would think. Electroids doesn't fit. What else? Oh, there's Reed Dolan through either of the ends, which I, I fully expect will be found, given that's high prob. I'm not seeing anything to the Y off the top of my head. Yeah, I don't think there's anything. Let's see. Yep, redolent. That uh, looks quite reasonable. As for which end to play it through, I think they score the same. I kind of like the other end, actually, just because it doesn't give back as many overlaps, I don't think. I feel like if you put the E here next to the double, they're probably a little bit more likely to score more. On the other hand, after the other redolent, then they could play uh, from this double water square and, and hit the double word and score there too. So I, I don't think it's a huge deal one way or another. Uh, let's see. Player two. Are they are they bingoing here? I see they have a full rack, which is a little bit strange because radicide to the C doesn't fit. There's no sevens. And I don't believe there's anything through the letters in Redolin. So let, let's see what happens here. Uh, oh, they... Sorry, guys, there was a little bit of lag there. They play diuretic to the C, which is not a word, and it appears like it's going to stay on the board. Wow. Okay, so I, I definitely retract what I said before with Linny about that sacrifice indicating they're being higher rated. There's no way players who are rated over 1900 are going to let diuretic spelled this way stay on the board, I have to imagine. That's very high prob and should be well known to be just radicide. Uh, diuretic needs to be spelled with uh, an E or a U in the third spot. Uh, so that's a, that's a pretty egregious phony by player two and a pretty egregious acceptance by player one. So, um, so any conceptions I had before this are now totally out the window. Player one had been playing solid Scrabble, but uh, letting this go is pretty rough. So yeah, now I'm thinking, honestly, probably... I mean, definitely below 1,800 and probably 1,700 tops. I mean, people do make one-off word knowledge mistakes. It certainly does happen, so I don't want to be too harsh just yet, but this is a, this is a pretty egregious phony. So let, let's see how the rest of the game goes. Uh, player one plays guide. Doesn't look great, to be honest. Uh, you're only scoring 16, and you're, you're giving up a lot of the good tiles on that rack. Kind of like to see... UE played off, although I do recognize there isn't really a good place to... No, there is a good place. You can just play Ute through the T in Redolin. That's that's a much better play because EGINR is a significantly stronger leave than ENR. Um, and you're down a little bit. You're you're not up, so there's no reason to be playing defensively here and shutting it down. Yeah, this is actually, I feel like, a pretty significant mistake. So all, all of a sudden, player one is, uh, is starting to, to play quite suboptimally. Uh, player two plays Glenn, and player one, let's see, maybe, I don't really like Heem down here. It scores okay, but it keeps two R's. Rehit is no good. Maybe remit to score pretty well and unduplicate the, the R's. That looks decent. Let's see what happens. Uh, yeah, meter is fine too. I guess they score about the same. Yeah, actually, meter scores two more, and it doesn't uh, it doesn't open this R. So uh, I think yeah, that's that's perfectly fine. Let's see here we we have this uh, next to next to guide, and player one. Let's see what are they gonna play here. Maybe maybe behavior to the ER. I don't like keeping the two R's. Yeah, actually, probably Braver is better to keep a more solid leave. And there's only one E unseen, so I'd, I'd much prefer keeping that E if possible. So uh, probably Braver. Yep, and that's what they play. Player two, they have a strong rack aside from this W in one of their eyes. Two S's. There's, there's an unseen blank, but no other unseen S's. Uh... Wait, we do have a full rack again here, though, guys. Does this mean that player two bingoed? Because there are, there are no valid bingos here. I would probably 
I would probably be aggressive and play WIS and swap here just because my leave is so strong, but let's let's see what happens. Okay, they do play that. So either either that was their rack and they just happened to have a full rack here, or that was a uh, a quackle generated rack that the the annotator player one didn't adjust. Um, but in any case, if that was their rack, I think it's aggressive but uh, perfectly reasonable given how strong their leave is. Back to player one, decent rack. Two eyes aren't great. Don't see a good way to use this spot above Wiss. Maybe, no, I was going to say high under Braver, H-I-E, but you can't get rid of that E, I don't think, with it being the second to last one. It's pretty valuable. Maybe something with e -wiss. Yeah, this is kind of a rough position. I'd also, I would like to turn over some tiles for, for that blank. There's not a lot of great options here. Yeah, let's see what player one did. I don't see anything great. I was thinking about Hernia too. I mean, I don't love getting rid of the E and all your good tiles, but I do still like getting rid of the uh, the blank. So I, I can kind of live with it. I mean, it's it's not a fun play to make, but I think given the lack of other good options, it's, it's defensible. Let's see, player two, I, I believe will play Jokiest and Ewist, and they do, and that should be the game. Player one now with a very clunky rack, and let's see, the unseen tiles, there's only four left, there's A-I-U-Y. So player two won't be going out, but uh, player one, of course, is not going to make back 89 points with uh, this kind of dreck in the end game. So at this point, it's sort of moot. We'll probably see Ava or something like that. Okay, player one challenged, which I can live with it. I mean... You're obviously not winning if uh, if it stays on the board, and uh, yeah, you're you're losing a little spread. And I mean, Jokey is, should be pretty well known, but I mean, I guess you could know Jokey for sure and not be a hundred percent that it compares. So can't really fault them for for challenging. Uh, player two with Ya, which seems okay. I mean, you're probably not leaving yourself an out with uh, with a U and an I, but it scores a lot of points. And at this point, it's uh, it's sort of moot. Unai looks pretty good, and you, uh, Daw, and it. So that's the game. Um, player two ends up winning by a score of 430 to 337. And uh, yeah, this this was a weird game. Um, the key point, I think, was obviously this phony bingo of diuretic to the C, which player two played, uh, if we go back a ways here, player two plays it to take a very small lead, and player one lets it stay. So, I feel like this definitely means, I'm going to stick to what I said before, I don't I don't think player one can be above 1,800 and let this stay on the board. I think that's extremely unlikely. And I feel like what this means is player two is either also not that high rated, or is really strong and is being clever and trying to take advantage of being higher rated than player one. Because if we go back, player two is down 74 here. And if, if they think they can get away with a phony against player one, it's actually a really good play. Because it's sort of a tough position to challenge. You feel like if, you, if you're player one and you challenge and you're wrong, then all of a sudden you're really giving player two a lot of initiative and the game could slip away quickly. Whereas you feel like, okay, I'm not sure. I accept it. It's an even game. So it's, it's either a really clever phony by, I would imagine, a, a strong probably 2,000 plus player, or it's another player who's um, a bit weaker and uh, has has some more significant gaps in their high probability word knowledge. So, let's see. What other plays were there that were, were kind of questionable? That was that Linny play, but I don't think I can really put stock in that. I know, or I know I'm going to guess sub-1800 for player one, given they let Diuretic go. Uh, I really didn't like Guide either. Um... Yeah, I'm going to say player one, I mean, until until Diuretic, they seemed like they were playing really well, and I don't remember seeing any other plays. Yeah, there were no other plays they made other than accepting Diuretic, um, playing Guide. I, I'm not going to fault them for challenging Jokiest, given the game situation. There were no other plays they made that were egregious, and not even really any other mistakes. So, I'm going to say player one was like 1750. I feel like, given how well they played, that's probably the highest I can I can give them, given that they let Diuretic go. 
1750, maybe up to 1800. Yeah, you know, I'll go 1770, just because they, they did play pretty solidly. Like, if you take Diuretic out, they, they played at, I would think, close to a 1900 level, if not higher. So, yeah, probably higher, because Guide and, and Challenging Jokius, which, again, I'm not faulting them for, given the situation, um, were really their only mistakes. And Guide was, was not great, but it wasn't horrible. So, yeah, if they played, like, a 1900, 1950 level, aside from Diuretic, yeah, I'll, I'll say 1770 for player one. And player two, kind of harder to know without their full racks. Again, Diuretic could be either a top player trying to get away with a well-timed phony or a weaker player who, who might have thought it was good. My instinct is kind of telling me player two is a, is a stronger player. They seem to be, uh, be making pretty strong plays otherwise and they they also didn't seem to be in a panic to open the board in the, in a tight game and i i see a lot of uh lower players being i think more in a panic when they're down a little bit and on a more closed board i think player player 2 was aggressive when it was warranted but not overly aggressive or reckless which to me suggests more of a stronger player so i'm going to take a bold guess here guys i'm going to say player 2 is rated 2020 and player 1 is rated 1770 I feel like I'm either going to be really wrong or, like, right on. Let's see. So once again, I'm saying player 2 is 2020 and player 1 is 1770. Let's have the big reveal. Wow! Okay, so... Wow. So player 1 was indeed very close to 1770. I was spot on there. I had 1750... It's 1757. But player 2 was a 1642. Wow, I was off by almost 400 points, guys, on player two. And I was, I was sort of correct though in the sense that I was like, they're either going to be a 2000 or they're going to be another 1700 player because of diuretic. I, I sort of had to take one of those two interpretations and I, I took the wrong one. Again, it's of course a bit harder without the full racks, but, uh, but still, well, well played to player two. I have to say for, for a 1642, they played that game quite well and, uh, whether, they were blissfully unaware that Diuretic was phony, um, or fully aware. Great, great play at that point in the game. Um, you know, it certainly worked out well, and you're down 70. It's, it's high prob, but it's reasonably plausible, and, uh, well played. So, yeah, not, uh, great job by me guessing on player one. Not so great job on, on player two. But, uh, another fun game, another fun episode, guys. Hope you enjoyed that, and, uh, we'll be back with more of this soon. Have a good one.